Bone healing is the first phase of recovery after limb lengthening. Do it right and everything else should fall in place. Hey, what's up guys? Victor from Cyborg for Life. And today we're gonna go over the top five ways to heal your bones after limb lengthening surgery. All right, so the first way is pretty obvious, which is to give your bones enough time and sufficient rest to heal. But how much time is enough? Well, typical bone fractures take about six to eight weeks to heal when they're realigned and set in place. But limb lengthening is different. And that's because there's two parts to healing. First, the bone regenerate needs to form in the lengthened gap, and then it can start to harden or consolidate, making that compact cortical bone that you need to bear weight and walk. So if you lengthen about one millimeter per day, and let's say that you go for 50 millimeters, which is about five centimeters, which takes about 50 days, or that's about seven weeks, okay, of lengthening. And it takes about, the rule of thumb is about one to one and a half months per centimeter to achieve full consolidation of that bone. So if you add it all up, that's about seven to nine months before your bones are fully healed, which is why your surgeons often wait, you know, until the one year mark to remove the internal nails. Although you'll probably be able to walk a little bit sooner if your surgeon sees enough bone cortices in your x-rays. Now when it comes to rest, actual sleep is super important because it's where your bone cells or osteocytes work their magic by regulating your calcium levels, as well as other key important minerals, which we're gonna get to a little later. Now, according to a study done by the Medical College of Wisconsin, led by Dr. Carol Everson, a chronic lack of sleep can lead to decreased bone mineral density, which means you could develop a delayed or non-union due to the weak bone regenerate. Also, lack of sleep can increase your cortisol and inflammation levels, which can crank up your bone resorption, which is the opposite of what you want after limb lengthening. Now, it always feels a little bit weird for me to recommend sleep to others, because I'm definitely not perfect, but how do you ensure that you get enough sleep after limb lengthening surgery? Well, natural methods like regulating your circadian rhythm and going to sleep on a normal schedule is definitely best, you know, using things like melatonin or calming herbs. But in the first few weeks after surgery, your hormones and your pain levels are gonna be haywire, so it's gonna be really, really hard and challenging to get some sleep. So if all else fails, just ask your surgeon if you can take an over-the-counter sleep medicine that can help you set your schedule a little bit. Also, if you have to take naps in a polyphasic sleep pattern, just know that any sleep is better than no sleep. All right, next up is proper diet and supplementation. Now, I know nutrition is never a popular topic amongst limb lengthening patients, and I'm not sure why. Probably because it's not some sort of, you know, flashy, expensive set of futuristic telescopic nails that lengthen your bones and so on, but um, it's just as important. In fact, 75 studies were analyzed in a 2017 retrospective review from the Journal of Osteoporosis, highlighting the importance of macro and micronutrients for optimal bone health. For your macros, things like eggs, fish, lean meat, uh, protein shakes, they're all good sources of lean protein. Nuts, avocados, um, certain cooking oils are good sources of healthy fats. And dark green vegetables, grains, um, and a bit of fruit are good sources of fibrous carbs. And your micros being your vitamins and minerals, things like your calcium, vitamin D3, vitamin C, uh, magnesium, zinc, silicon, boron, phosphorus, uh, vitamin K2, you get it, okay? And you could obviously get all this from eating a healthy diet rich in you know, dairy and what I mentioned before, but if not, supplementation is your next best bet. Now, as far as calories go, you definitely don't want to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight during lengthening, because this can negatively impact your bone healing, but you don't have to go crazy either. Um, but you don't have to really worry about that, because I've heard from a lot of patients that, you know, they don't really have a huge appetite after limb lengthening surgery anyways. Now, the third way to heal your bones is through mechanical stress or weight bearing. The only thing is, is that you can't really walk freely until your bones are fully healed. So you're gonna have to use a gradual loading approach where according to your surgeon, you can partially weight bear a percentage of your body weight using some sort of walking assistance like a walker or crutches. In a review article from ACTA Orthopedica, researchers examined how mechanotransduction stimulates osteogenesis. And this is basically how bones respond to the biomechanical loading and directional stressors placed upon them, thus remodeling the micro damaged to prevent deformation or a future fracture. And it's the signal transduction pathway that allows the osteoblast to differentiate into the osteocytes, which are your bone cells. And basically this means that the more overload you place on your bones, the stronger and more dense it becomes. Kind of like how muscles responds to lifting weights. And one other interesting fact that they point out in the article is that the implant devices should be stable, yet they shouldn't prevent a net overload past the threshold for optimal bone healing. So if you think about it, perhaps this is why a lot of full weight bearing nails don't create as good bone regenerate due to the massive offloading, thus interfering with the important mechanotransduction process. So how do you go about gradual weight bearing to ensure good bone healing? Well, your post-op rehab program should implement some sort of scaled loading using either a walker and a weight scale, you know, a calm pool for hydrotherapy, you can use an anti-gravity treadmill, 
or even a leg press that you know is under the permitted weight capacity. Now the next way to help bone healing is by a bone stimulator, which is an external digital machine that produces some sort of signal to instigate osteogenesis. And there's actually two different forms of bone stimulation. First you have lipus, which is low intensity pulse ultrasound. And then you have PEMF, which is pulsed electromagnetic field. In 2016, a publication by Dr. Julio Waregi and Dr. John Hertzenberg and a few others, uh, seven different studies were analyzed to determine the effectiveness of lipus and PEMF you know, for bone healing. And while neither directly heals bones themselves, it was shown that they can actually expedite the body's natural healing process by reducing the bone healing time by nearly two weeks. Okay, and the really cool part is that I was actually part of this 153 patient cohort who used either of the technologies during the lengthening process. All right, and I feel like it helped my tibia to form good quality bone regenerate in the gap because I was able to distract at the one millimeter per day for the entire distraction phase. So if you wanna add a bone simulator to your bone healing arsenal, just ask your surgeon if they can prescribe it to you and then just use it as instructed. And finally, the last method of bone healing is kind of like a last resort because it's a little bit invasive. And that is either PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, or an auto or aloe bone graft. Now, in a more recent 2021 systematic review of you know, preclinical and clinical studies, they showed that PRP had an overall positive effect on bone healing in fixation-based surgeries. Now, some of the researchers believe that some bone regenerate was needed as a scaffold, you know, for maximal effectiveness. However, they also reported some potential conflicting results between some of the studies. So take what you will from it, but I believe that in the coming years, there will be more data on PRP and it will highlight its effectiveness. Now, bone graft, on the other hand, has a high degree of effectiveness, but it is the most invasive because if you get an autograft done, your surgeon's gonna actually have to harvest the bone from somewhere else in your body. And for adults, it's typically the hip bone or the iliac crest. And according to another review paper, the reason why autographs work so well is due to the histocompatibility, you know, of your own body's bone cells, and that'll help amplify your body's natural healing process for quality bone regenerate. So if you've developed a non-union and you've tried all the other methods that I've talked about, then maybe you should sit down with your surgeon and discuss, you know, possibly going the bone graft route. Because no one likes complications, but no one likes non-unions even more. And now that I listed the top ways to heal your bones, I wanna briefly mention what not to do so you can play defense as well as offense. And they are don't smoke, don't vape, don't fast, um, avoid excessive amounts of alcohol, and limit your intake of super sugary foods while you're lengthening. So there you have it. Those are the top five ways to heal your bones after limb lengthening surgery, or any other bone surgery for that matter. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe, and until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace.